Yo, welcome back. In this video, we are using loops to fill vectors one more time. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build a vector here with 10 elements that are integers, and each of those elements is going to, or each of those integers, which are in the elements, are going to be numbered 1 through 10. So, uh, and we're going to, I'm going to show you two different ways to accomplish this. Um, one of those ways will be using pushback, and the other way will not. So, First of all, what we have to do is we have to define our vector. So, and we pick our element type, integer, as I mentioned, and then we give our vector a name. So let's just call it stuff. And for now, let's not initialize it with, uh, with any size. So we'll start off with size of zero. So what we'll do is we'll use a loop, and we'll have for uh, int i equals one. Now be careful, we almost always, in for loops, say int i equals zero. Uh, I'll show you why in one second. Then we'll have uh, for i is less than or equal to 10. Again, we almost always have int i equals 0, then i less than 10, not less than equal. But there's a reason for this, and you'll see why. Uh, so in our statements here, what we want to do is we want to use pushback. So we have stuff dot pushback, and then we're going to drop in whatever the value for i is. Okay, so let's talk about this. When our program comes down, uh, and it sees this vector definition here. It's going to know that we have a vector of type integer, name, stuff, and size zero. Um, and that's all. So when we enter our loop, we, we begin using this integer i here as sort of a counter, uh, and that's set to one. And then when we use pushback for the first time, what this does is this creates the first element and fills it with whatever i is. So. Uh, in this way, the first the first run of pushback will create the element and fill it with a one. Then when we increment i to two, we'll come back in, use pushback a second time, and the second element that we add in to stuff is the number two. And when we increment i again to three, the third element that we put in uh, will be a three. Now, if this was a zero and this was less than or equal to nine or just less than ten, then our vector, the values, instead of going from 1 through 10, they would just go from 0 through 9. So that's what the big difference is there. Now let's print this out to the screen for us just so we can see and kind of check what we've done. Um, so we'll use another for loop. And then here we'll have, you know, we'll use a different counter. We'll say int j equals 0. And then we'll have j less than 10. So this is usually the type of format for a for loop that we're looking at. And we'll talk about the difference here in a second. We'll have j plus plus, and then we'll just be nice to ourselves and see out stuff spelled correctly. And we'll use the index value of j. And then we'll end line. All right. Uh, let's go build and run that. And I think yeah, it'll be it'll be helpful just to see the output to see why this is 0 and why this is 1. So when we run this, <clears throat> all right. So. It's printing out 1 through 10, which is good. That's That was the, the goal. Let's talk about why. So we already talked about here the reason why this is a 1 uh, is so we put a 1 in the first element of, uh, of stuff, and then we put a 2 in the second element, and we put 3 in the third element. Those are the, like the, uh, the, the first, second, and third. It's not talking about the index numbers. Just the first one, the index number of the first element is technically zero, um, but this is talking about, this doesn't care what the index number is actually, this is just dropping them in in order that it receives them. And it'll do it up to 10 times. So then why we have int j equals zero, so when we want to print something to the screen, we enter this loop, int j is zero, and then when we see out stuff j, it's seeing out whatever the value is that has the index value corresponding to j equals zero. So the index value of zero is actually the first element. And the first element that we put in here was a one. Then we see out, then we increment j. So then j is equal to one. And when we see out stuff at the index value of one, index value of one is actually the second element in the vector. So the second element in the vector, well, that was the second element that we put in, and that was a two. So there you go. And the same thing would happen for three. So, you know, index, or for the third element, you know, j equals two, 
that's the index value stuff with the index value of two, but that's actually the third element, and we put a three in as a third element, so that's why you're seeing a difference here in the loops, but it's still spitting out sort of exactly what we want. All right, so that's one way to do this. Um, I'll show you another way. What if we were to, we're gonna change things up a little bit. What if we were to initialize this vector with a, with a size of 10? Well, this would, uh, using pushback now would get really hairy because it already has 10 values or 10 elements. And then when we use pushback, we're actually, we're, we'd be the first 10 elements would all be zeros and then the 11th element would be a one and then the 12th element would be a two and the 13th element would be a three and that's not really what we want because we want uh, we want at the end of the day a vector with 10 elements so we're not going to be able to use pushback anymore so we're going to have to wipe that out and actually I think the easiest thing the way to go about this maybe let's just delete this whole for loop this can stay the same but we'll have to rewrite the for loop. So what we would do is we have int i, int i is equal to zero, and this is probably going to work out better for us. Uh, then we'll have uh, i is less than 10, and then i plus plus, i plus plus. And then here uh, we'll have stuff i, and then now we're using the index value where before when we were using pushback, we weren't really acknowledging the index value. Um, we'll just have i, uh, keep it easy, i plus 1. So let's build and run this, see what the program output is, and then talk about it. All right, so it's printing out exactly the same thing. And the reason why this is happening is when we come into the program, we define our vector. Uh, it has integer type, stuff is the name, and it, now it would actually be defined initially with uh, 10 zeros in it. Uh, then when we enter the loop, we set this counter to i to zero, and then when we, what we want to do is we want for the index value for the index value that corresponds to i, so index would be zero, uh, which means it's the first element. Then we would have zero plus one, so that would plop in a one there. Uh, then when we would go to the second iteration of the loop, i would now be equal to one. So for the index value stuff i one. That's actually the second element for the index value of one. Uh, and in the second element, uh, we want one plus one. So we would get that two in there. And the same thing happens when and i is equal to two. Uh, I think you can see the pattern here. So, uh, and obviously this, this part here, uh, that can stay the same. We're just still printing out the elements of the vector by their index number. So a little bit weird, but I just wanted to show you that there's sort of you know, two different ways that you can go about using uh, using loops and vectors to uh, to fill them with values, whether or not you're using pushback or you're using just the the index value itself to add in elements.